You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? Mike from the Moose on the Loose. How are you doing this Thursday? Uh, you know, we're trading close to all time high, or we are at all time high. Actually, most of your stocks are probably doing very great in this beginning of the year. And then you may think, okay, so I look at some of those stocks in my portfolio and the uh, the PE is getting way too high to my comfort zone. And, and this is what we usually call the P.E. expansion. So when a stock price goes up, uh, it's usually a matter of two things. The first one, which is a great explanation, and this is what you would like to see all the time, is because earnings per share has also increased significantly, meaning that you're paying more for the business, but in terms of valuation, it's the same P.E. ratio because the earnings have followed the stock price. A good example for that would be Alimentation Costar, where it trades pretty much at the same valuation, same multiple of earnings today than it was five, six years ago. So when you see that, well, then you're just paying the same price and it's just a, 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 a result, a consequence of a good management where the business is thriving, it making more profit and obviously created value for shareholders. So this is what we like. Unfortunately, from time to time, you get what we call PE expansion. So PE expansion is when the stock price rises faster than earnings per share. So in other words, you may be paying a uh, stock 20 times its earnings, so P ratio of 20. And then five years later, the stock price, I skyrocketed, and now the P ratio is at 25 because it didn't follow the earnings per share. So if the stock price goes up by 100 and the earnings per share went up by 50% during a period of time, well, obviously, you will have a higher P ratio. So that P ratio, before we talk about should you sell when you see like higher P ratio than usual, needs some context. It needs some um, more additional information. So keep in mind that first, the PE ratio is based on earnings and earnings are based on accounting principles. So from time to time, you may see something that will impact the earnings that is just a one-time amortization shot or, or, or an impairment or any modification to the accounting side that will affect earnings. And then the stock price will not move for that. But if the earnings drops, well, then boom, the PE ratio goes up. So if it's a one time, it's not the end of the world. If you can put context into it, you can understand what's going on and the forward PE ratio, so the expected earnings in the next 12 months, well then if it's going back to the normal level, you don't have to worry. Another reason why we see PE expansion is when we have a change in the business model or a change in the industry. Pretty good example here would be the rise of artificial intelligence. We saw, I mean, classic example would be NVIDIA that just like went ballistic, which is like crazy how fast it was. And then the PE ratio also exploded. But the market is telling us they expect the company to grow their profit significantly in the future. And then they are ready to pay a premium today. So a higher valuation, a higher multiple on earnings today, because they believe that those earnings per share are going to also skyrocket in the future. As you may say, as you may think, this also opens the door to speculation. So the market gets in hype and then investors are just thinking, yeah, I'm going to buy this because it's going to be the next big thing. It's going to skyrocket and they're going to make so much money that I must buy it right now so I can sell it later at a higher price. Unfortunately, that speculation is based on the expectation of profit. And if it doesn't happen in the future, well, then what we see is that PE expansion, it kind of creates a bubble and then it bursts and then it goes down. Hence the question, should you take profit when the PE gets too high? Personally, I'm not obsessed with valuation because it is 
always moving and it's all like your best bet on your calculation is just as good as your assumptions and your assumptions are just as good as your crystal ball. And unfortunately, I haven't met someone with a clear crystal ball that will tell me at which price a stock will trade in a year from now successfully all the time for all the stocks because it's normal. There are so many uncertainties. So now you look at that stock and what I prefer to do instead is to acknowledge that the P ratio is getting higher than usual. That's the first thing. The second thing is now I must, to, I must look at what is the context? What is the explanation? What's the buzz around that stock? And do I understand it? And do I think that it is feasible for this company to report like big growth going forward? A good example would be Microsoft that trades above 30 times its earnings. Definitely not a comfortable spot in terms of valuation. However, Microsoft currently has multiple growth vectors. They have the cloud business with Azure. They recently bought Activision Blizzard in the gaming industry, making Microsoft the top three making a player in the uh, in the gaming industry. And they obviously invested massively in artificial intelligence development through OpenAI and ChatGPT. And they're using that technology to bolster all their software suites. So at this level, Microsoft is pretty much forced to report double digit growth across the board. If they fail doing this and they report like a revenue growth of 5% and EPS growth of 4% in 24, you can be assured that we're going to see the stock price going down. But as long as they report very strong numbers, well, the narrative, the idea that Microsoft is going to continue to thrive in the future will be validated by those numbers. So as long as the numbers follows the narrative and back it up, well, then the P expansion will kind of be justified for a while, though. So my best trick to determine if I should sell or not, because again, we're still in the assumption here. I believe that Microsoft can pull it off, but I mean, I could interview somebody else who could tell me exactly the opposite, right? It's just like my assumptions versus your assumption and nobody knows who's going to be right until we wait in time. So instead, I look at each of my position and I look at the weight of them in my portfolio. So the key here is to let my winners run as long as I can, but at one point I set a limit. And while my ideal position would be about 3% of my portfolio, so whenever I, I start a new position in my portfolio, I amass enough cash that it represents 3% of all my portfolios. Uh, so not just one, just not just my Lira account or my RSP or any other accounts. I really want to have like 3% of all my portfolio built together. So that stock will have a significant, meaningful impact on my portfolio because I will spend time on it, monitoring it, analyzing it, reviewing it. So I want to make sure that this company does not fail me. And actually, if I make a good choice, I want to make sure that it goes well. So if a stock goes up above 10%, chances are there's a mix of the company's doing amazing and there is some PE expansion. And at this point, this is where I sell some shares and I trim it down because that's my limit in terms of exposure to risk to a single stock. So that limit is purely arbitrary. I'm just sharing that to you. It's not an advice. It's not a financial recommendation. Then you need to know which type of limit you want to set in your portfolio. That limit is a tool to help you avoid dilemmas. So I could set the limit at eight and that's that will be fine too. But here's the thing. As soon as the stock hits that limit, I know that I have to trim and that's great because I don't have to think about it. I don't have to dispute or like start into uh, like some research and determine, oh, should I keep this stock or not? No, there is some PE expansion. The company's thriving. It's definitely a great investment because now it's above the limit of the weight in my portfolio. So now it's time to cash some profit. On the other way around, I'm not a big fan of say, oh, Microsoft, it trades above 30 times the, its earnings. I'm going to sell now and then I'm going to wait and then I'm going to try to catch it on the way down and I'm going to buy again. And that is just playing casino. And I'm not playing. I am investing. So I'm not trying to sell high and buy low and sell high and buy low on the same stock. 
I mean, that could work for some people. For me, it's against my mentality. It's it's against my investment philosophy. And it would create a lot more doubts, a lot more thinking and tracking that I'm willing to do actually on the stock. So when I do a due diligence and I'm convinced that I bought a, co- a right great company, I'm I don't want to like look at it every single day. So I want to let it go. I want to let it run and do what it does and then benefit from the power of compounding. Uh, So that's it. Just to sum it up before we hit the 10 minutes mark, P ratio, when there's a P expansion, put that into context, look at the numbers to understand it, revise your assumption, and most importantly, revise the weight of that stock in your portfolio. So you want to have like, Companies that are significant but not too exposed because you're if you're making a mistake and that stock dropped by t- by fifty percent, you don't want to lose a big chunk of your entire investment. So right, Moose, that's enough for today. Tomorrow it's Business Friday, but we're gonna talk about Argentina, what I did, what I liked, and how the trip went. So all about it in ten minutes tomorrow. So stay tuned and stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to The Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun, you're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor, I am not your broker, so therefore I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to the podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.